remember there was a red-headed Aussie in here earlier. Yeah, Fandango. Fandango. She and I do a show together called Girls on Film, and we made you our woman crush when you wrote the Lenny piece. Oh my god, I'm so flattered. Thank you. Because we loved it. It was Thanks. amazing and wonderful. And I couldn't help but think about it watching this movie because I was thinking, well, is this the kind of relentless self-advocacy, even in the face of unforeseeable odds, um, that you think that women need in this industry and entertainment too? Yeah, but I, I mean, not even for women especially. I mean, Joy is just... Joy is someone who no, nobody believes in. Everybody has dreams, so nobody nobody's ever going to initially believe in your dream when you say, "I want to be an actor," or, "I have an invention." You know, everybody's gonna be like, "Yeah, so does everybody else." It takes a certain vigilance and um, and belief in yourself when when nobody else does, and also seeing your own value, which I think um, w women in negotiating need to understand is that you it's okay to recognize your value it doesn't mean you're a brat mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you're you know any of these words that we have for women that we don't have for men um to just recognize your value so yes yeah so way. that i we talk about that all the time because i find it to be challenging to advocate for myself and yeah. i think a lot of women do but i'm curious in your case it's even harder more complicated because there are people advocating for you so like in that situation what really could you have done but be more involved with your agents no it wasn't you know agents and lawyers and everybody you know they they work for me so they so I told when I when I if I tell them just settle or settle the deal then they'll settle the deal it's not it doesn't have anything if, I, if I'm not getting paid enough money it doesn't have anything to do with them because they're doing you know what I'm asking of them um, but it was but my experience was more of a personal one of a if I, I and I would do I would do American Hustle and get paid the same exact thing all over again because we were doing an ensemble movie and it's impossible to get that many everybody's gonna have to take a cut um, what I realized when the Sony hack happened which is unfortunate because those e we, we should have never seen those emails but when I did I, I remembered how I felt it wasn't really what happened it wasn't anything that anyone was doing but how I felt during the negotiation was I, I wanted to settle, you know, I was like, okay, well, and I calmed all of my people down. I was like, okay, you know, like, let's, let's just settle, let's just settle. I don't want to seem like this and I don't want to seem like that. Um, and then after seeing, you know, what the men were being paid, I was like, well, why don't men feel that way? Why don't men feel that kind of, feel that kind of pressure? And maybe they do, but I can't, I, my only perspective is of a woman. So, um, so I said something. Yeah, this is such a great, beautiful, wonderful character. I love too that she's in synchronicity with some men. I mean, they are there supporting her, the Bradley Cooper character. Yeah. Um, is that sort of you and David L. Russell? Are you those two sides of a coin? David respects me so much that he will literally forget what sex I am. He sometimes refers to me as a he without realizing <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> But he, you know, Edgar, Edgar spoke about this beautifully because he is so, his character is so secure in his masculinity that he's not, he's not afraid to support a woman. He's not afraid to support his wife, um, which is, is beautiful and amazing and, and, and is hopefully will be inspiring. For breaking entertainment news and more, follow at HitBix on Twitter or visit HitBix.com.